Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, playing some more Super Mario Odyssey. And here's the thing, uh, I had recorded an episode in which I got 20 moons here in Peach's Castle, and I accidentally deleted it, because the program I'm using to record is, is really annoying. Um, so what I'm going to do, I have made a list of those 20 moons, and we're going to go and re-get the ones we can get, and I'll explain why we can't re-get the other ones. Uh, so, we got two Toadette moons in that video, so we actually have to leave the kingdom first uh, and head back to Bowsette's castle, which is over here, like this, make our way over there, uh, the loading time's a little annoying. Uh, you'll notice the moon count is higher than you might expect, that's because I'm re-recording after doing a few more episodes. Um, don't worry too much about it. <laughs> anyway, uh, what we have to do here in Bowsette's Castle is make our way over to the secret path. Uh, because there is a Toadette Moon for doing all of the secret paths in the game. Uh, and we actually skipped this one because you can go around it by using a Gushin in the Seaside Kingdom, which we did, as you might remember. Uh, so we're going to head over this way now. And just jump into this painting here. Which will take us, as you might expect, to the Seaside Kingdom. Uh, not too complicated. Just got to make our way through there. And when we get there, we have of course already got the moon. So there's not much to be done when we're here. Uh, as you can see, it's a ghost moon. We can grab it for some coins, but nothing too special. Uh, we just head, down, head down this way now. Uh, this is exactly what I did the first time. I just made my way back to the Odyssey after landing here. You could walk, but traveling in this game is fun, so... I just roll my way over there. There we go. And then we can just head back to Peach's Castle and continue with the other moons we need to do. Uh, so there are two uh, Toadette moons to be done. One of them is World Warper Moon 97. Uh, which we just unlocked by doing that last warp. Um, because there's ten warps in the game, we did all ten of them. There you go. Uh, the other one is Music Maestro, uh, which you get for talking to the Jammin' Toad and getting moons from that in every kingdom. Uh, we've done both of those things. Uh, I actually talked to the Jammin' Toad in the previous video. I just didn't go back inside and talk to Toadette afterwards. Uh, so after doing those two things, when we go in there and talk to Toadette, she would give us two moons. She won't now because we've already got them, but that's where we would get two moons. Uh, we would also get a moon from talking to... Uh, the Tourist, who is not here anymore. Uh, the Tourist was just here, and we could talk to the Tourist and get a moon that way, but they've now left because we got that moon already. Uh, where I'm standing now, basically. Uh, so that's how you get one of the Tourist moons. Um, which we can't do now, obviously, because they're already gone. Uh, we also got two moons from make our way up here, you'll be able to see the garden moons are all here now. These two on the left side, that's uh, got Moon 4 and Moon 5. The Garden Seed and Field Seed. Uh, they don't, like, respawn or whatever, so we can't redo putting the seeds in the pots, but you get the idea. Um, um, so that's that. There's also over here Moon 8, which is one we can actually redo. Uh, you can see that there's, like, these flowers here. If you just do a nice spinning cap throw, you get a moon. Like that. Uh, there's another one over here we can do as well, which is getting on this scooter. We can do a Mushroom Kingdom timer challenge. So basically, the intended way to do it, I'm pretty sure, is to just grab this scooter and zoom over there with it. I'm pretty sure you could roll over there if you were, like, real precise, but it's much easier just to use the scooter. As you can see, easy peasy. Uh, the next one we need to do is taking notes around the well, Moon 11. Uh, as you can see, there's a note there in the 2D section. I happen to already know that you absolutely need two players to do this while crouching, because when you enter... Oh, maybe not. Okay, you can do it without two players, so that, that's cool. Uh, I thought you needed two players that you could turn around, but I just held left there, and I'm facing the way I need to face. So, no, you can do it without two players, and I'm about to prove that. 
basically, you hit this note, and then you just have to jump forward again. Uh, because you're facing forward, you'll go a lot faster, which means there's more than enough time to grab all these notes without any trouble. As you can see, uh, the ones outside are, of course, easy. Uh, you can do a spinning captor if you want, or you can just get in some other way, it doesn't really matter. Oh, come on. Seriously? <laughs> Alright, we'll try that again. So, you have to hold left to make sure you come out facing this way, because if you're facing the other way, getting the notes, you'll be going a lot slower because you're going backwards. Uh, in my previous attempt, I actually used two-player mode, so I could turn around by doing a cappy float. Uh, but that's not necessary, you can just hold left and it does the same thing. Anyway, uh, the 2D part is actually very easy, just, I'm just mashing the B button and holding left here. See, easy peasy. So this part, uh, hopefully we can actually do a spinning cap throw this time, which is obviously the intended way to do this. See, easy. Okay, uh, so, making good progress. Uh, you may have noticed that there's like ghost fruit all over the place. Uh, the intended thing to do is, if you eat these fruit with Yoshi, it will fill up a little fruit bar, um, uh, that Yoshi has, and when you've eaten enough fruit, you get a power moon. So there's enough fruit here to get three power moons out of that. And I got all of them already, so the fruit are now not, not accessible, therefore the moon is not accessible. If you eat this fruit now, they just give you coins. Uh, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that, that, that would... That's how you do that. You get Yoshi from the roof, you eat every fruit all around the area, and that rewards you with a power moon. Uh, we can do the next power moon, though, which is number 16, Love at Peach's Castle. Uh, to do that, we actually have to go up to the moat first. Uh, because we need to drain the moat, uh, which can be done kind of like in Mario 64, you can drain the moat. Uh, it actually plays the same sound effect, which is kind of cute. You just have to pull up these pegs that are underwater, basically. Um, uh, there are four of them, I believe. Maybe five. But yeah, you pull these up, the moat will drain. There's a couple of reasons you need to do this. One is to get the love at Peach's Castle Moon. The other reason I can't show you because it saves. See, it plays the secret noise from Mario 64. It's cute. Uh, the other reason, basically there's a pipe over here. Uh, here somewhere. There it is, this pipe. Uh, there was a big piece of fruit clogging that pipe. So you had to have Yoshi eat it in order to get in there. Um, there, there is another pipe like that, which, we'll, which we will also be visiting. Uh, but basically those two pipes, you just have to make your way over and you can get stuff. Uh, but yeah, so now we've drained the moat, we can get these, uh, Goombas here, and make a nice Goomba tower. I believe it needs to be quite tall for this to work. I don't remember exactly how many Goombas you need, but it was a lot. Uh, we took a hit there, that's not a problem. So yeah, just make a nice tall Goomba tower, like this. And then you can bring your Goomba tower over to where Goombet is. The reason you need to drain the moat is that Goombas and Yoshi both can't swim. Uh, if you jump into deep water with a Goomba tower, the Goombas will just vanish, and obviously, then Goombat can't fall in love with them. Uh, the only way to get close enough for it to give you the moon is having the moat drained. Uh, unless you can jump that gap. I don't think you can, though. You just bring a tower of Goombas like this, and then she'll give you the moon. There we go. Uh, the, the next moon we can do is actually quite close to here, so we're going to do that next. Uh, next moon I did do, I mean. Uh, the next moon is num number 17, Toad Defender. Uh, the deal with this one is, uh, we actually saw it a second ago, up on this hill, uh, not this hill, uh, that hill over there. Uh, you can see that there's a toad standing in front of a power moon. Like this. This is very similar to a moon we had to collect back in the Cap Kingdom. Uh, you can see this, this toad says they're not, that they're not scared of Goombas. So all we have to do is capture a Goomba and bring it up, uh, because Mario revels in tormenting innocent Goomba. That's the plural, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, you only need one here because you can get back, back up there without having to go through the water. Uh, it's a little slow to go around, but it's not too tricky. But yeah, you just take your regular Goomba around this side, around this side, up the little slope here. 
You come up to this toad, toad gets scared away, and he's adorable. I'm all scared of you around Goombas, what a cutie. Here, I'll, I'll help you. I'll get rid of this Goomba for you. You're welcome. So yeah, once you've done that, you can just go grab the moon. And that's number 17, Toad Defender. So number 18 is the next one I got, and that one is called Forever Onward Captain Toad. So you might be able to guess what it's for. Uh, it's for talking to Captain Toad, who is up there on that rooftop. Uh, we can't do it again, but we can get back up there and show you how we would have done it. Um, I believe I just jumped on these boxes. There's a couple of ways to get up there, though. The boxes are pretty easy. So yeah, you just get up here, you talk to Captain Toad, you get a moon. Uh, the next one after that is shopping. Uh, this is the shop just here. Uh, I won't buy another moon because that would inflate our moon count because you can buy multiple moons. Uh, but I will go into the shop for a different reason. Uh, which is that I bought the special outfit from this kingdom in the same video. Uh, so you can see the special outfit is the Mario 64 cap and suit, which is incredibly charming. Uh, all you got to do, I'm just going to put it on because I need to show the costume room. Uh, up, 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 uh, it's here somewhere. There it is. So yeah, when you put this outfit on, Mario actually goes all low res like he was in Mario 64, which is super cute. Uh, I love that detail. There we go. We now have Mario 64 Mario. The reason you need to be Mario 64 Mario is that there's a certain room over here. You might have spotted another toad near that other one we had to scare, uh, who was wearing a Mario hat. That, that toad's like an obsessive fan or something, and is really excited to see that we're all blocky and polygonal, uh, and is happy to let us into the room if we look like this. So basically, yeah, the costume room in this kingdom requires you to dress like a Mario 64 character, which is amazing. See? And this room, it so happens, is also a reference to Mario 64. Because it's the courtyard from the castle. Low res and everything. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, it's, um, so yeah, it's using the low res textures and everything the original version had. Um, the original version also had no music, so that matches. There was, I think there was some ambient sound. I don't know. Anyway, uh, you may remember the Eternal Star statue, or the L is Real 2401 statue, depending on who you ask. Of course, it is now a source of a moon, because why wouldn't it be? It looks very interactive, even though it wasn't in the original game. <coughs> well, it wasn't interactive in the original game, I mean, it was in the original game. What are we going to do? Just throw Cappy at it. Correctly. <laughs> Cappy! And you get a moon. Uh, this moon is number 27, and it's called Totally Classic. Which makes sense, but I would have called it something like Ella's Real 2401. Uh, there's also a moon for opening these chests in the correct order. Which I think is meant to be a bit of a reference to the way there were booze in this courtyard originally. Uh, because the last chest you have to open, I might, I might mess up the order just to demonstrate. Or I might get it correct the first time, who knows. Okay, I got it right the first time. <laughs> uh, last chest you have to open is... Oh, I forgot about six. Okay. You can see that these little mummies come out. I think that's because that's the closest thing this game has to booze. Because they're sort of, you know, spirits that are creepy and ghostly or whatever. Um, but yeah, so you have to open them all in the right order. And the last one happens to be in the same place the entrance to Big Boo's Haunt was in the original Super Mario 64. And I think that's a deliberate reference. Uh, but yeah, so you just open them in the right order, which is not hard. I just messed it up because I'm bad at video games. Four, five, six is over there. I assume the reason there are eight is because of the eight red coins stuff that you do all the time in Mario 64. Seven. And finally, over here, as I mentioned, this is where the entrance to Big Boo's Haunt would be. And this moon is number 28, Courtyard Chest Trap. Um, so yeah. Rather than actually entering a level, you just get a moon there. Uh, okay, so we have a few more to do. Uh, actually, let me just check. Uh, yeah, there's, there should be three more moons to collect at this point. There's no counter because we're not actually collecting them, but yeah. Um, so one of them is just over here. Uh, like in many kingdoms, there is a hat and seek moon to get here, and the hat and seek moon is found by talking to this toad here, uh, who is... 
who, you know, has a bonneter, bonne bonneter on their head. Um, so yeah. Uh, the other two moons are in a sub-area, and this kingdom doesn't have very many sub-areas, so it's kind of notable. Uh, if we come over... We bring ourselves over... let me see... It's further this way, I think. Yes. Uh, if you bring over here, there's a pipe, and that pipe, just like the other one I mentioned, was blocked by a fruit before. Now it's not, so we can head in there to reach a sub-area. Uh, and this is based around Yoshi. Um, I've already eaten all the fruit here. I'm going to try to just eat it all again, just so you can see what it involves. There's only one moon for eating fruit here, so... Pretty sure I can't get it again, but I will eat all the fruit anyway, just, just for the... You know, sake of retaking this video. Uh, it's not too tricky. Uh, because you have to use Yoshi to eat fruit, you can't, you know, crouch for a lot of this challenge. Yoshi's wall jumping is also kind of weird. But it works. There we go. Basically, the easiest way to get those is just a flutter jump, uh, rather than trying to use your tongue, because if you touch a fruit, you'll eat it. Uh, here, there's some more of these scary fish of death, so you got to watch out for that. Uh, you got to gobble the fruit from on top of them. way back over this way. Uh, there's two fruit up there, so we do need to go up there to get them. So you get the basic idea of the platforming here. Um, I'm going to put Yoshi back at the beginning and then do the second star as Mario, second moon, moon star, whatever they're called, uh, because then we get to crouch. Um, so this part, you can just hover over that without too much trouble. I need the last couple of fruits. There we go. So now if we just head back towards the beginning, So we can get Mario and have Mario do this instead. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so as Mario, uh, we ate all the fruit, so as soon as you eat the last fruit, the moon would normally spawn. Uh, it didn't happen this time because, you know, we're, you know, already got the moon. But uh, that's what would happen. Uh, I haven't tried to do this part with Mario, actually. Wow. Okay, yeah, that's doable. <laughs> Uh, we're going to tilt the platform a bit this way. Okay, yeah, that's easily doable with Mario. Uh, this part, pretty much just want to do some nice long jumps and backflips and stuff, which are the moves we can do, so not a problem. Uh, you can use a cap bounce to avoid getting eaten by the fish. Uh, so you basically want to come over to where those last two fruit were, uh, over here. Yes, that worked. Uh, and if you look real close, uh, you fall off. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I might just take the shortcut since I basically already did it. Uh, you can just drop down here. Uh, there's actually a ledge that goes all the way along here that's hidden. Um, so yeah, what you're supposed to do is just go off the end of that instead of the side because I accidentally messed it up. And then... You can just see it. It's easier to see before you collect it because it's a bit brighter. But there's a moon just sitting here in the clouds, which you can grab. And it's actually very easy to reach because you don't have to do the whole route. You can just take this path. But you don't know that because of all the clouds. Uh, anyway, uh, that's all 20 moons. Let me just check the list again. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, and yes. Okay, so that's all 20 moons from this kingdom that we did, that I did in this original video. Uh, I've shown where they are. Some of them, as I mentioned, can't be recollected. Uh, but the ones I have recollected, the ones that can be, I have recollected, so that's, that's good. Um, and, you know, you get the basic idea of what happened in that video. Um, although I improved a couple of things, like the routing for the, uh, for the, um, the taking notes moon, because it turns out you don't need to use two player mode. I don't know if that counts as routing or something else. Also, yeah, if you throw Cappy at that star, you get some coins. Basically, throw Cappy at anything and you get some points. Get some coins out, um, because that's how this game works. Uh, for some reason, these um, lock ladies are astonished that this fountain exists, which I find very strange, because 
they live underwater. Like, th their, whole, their whole city is underwater. Why is this little fountain a wonder of moisture? Uh, I don't know. It's weird. Um, but yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Um, I just had to revisit some stuff. Uh, it, it's shorter than the original because, you know, I already knew where I was going. I didn't have to think about which moon to get next and that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm pretty sure those are the 20 moons that were in the video we lost, so... Um, let me know if I seem to be missing a moon that I should have gotten or whatever. <laughs> um... Uh, and yeah, so that's it for this video. Uh, oh, hello, coins. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, that's, that's 20 moons from the Mushroom Kingdom that we didn't collect because we already had them, but you get the idea. Uh, I, ho I hope you enjoyed. I hope it's not too much of a bother, the fact that I had to re-record this instead of, you know, having an original recording from the time I did this the first time. Um... So, I really hope you enjoyed. Um, with the next video, we'll be back to regular scheduled programming, which was taken before this video, so... Uh, I will have, you know, fewer moons for several videos before getting back to where we are now. Uh, so, you know, expect that. Um, and yeah, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. And I'm sorry about what happened with having to re-record it, but... You gotta do what you gotta do. Just sometimes re-recording. <sighs> it's a shame. Um, but anyway, if you, as long as you enjoy, we're probably all good. Um, and I think I got the list right. Let's see. 20, yeah, yeah, that looks right. That looks right to me. I'm pretty sure those are the ones. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's it for this video. I said that several times in a row. I spent like two minutes rambling. Uh, bye!